Over the past few projects, I have been working off a two by six workbench just laid over some saw horses. And while it does work, it's a little bit frustrating not having a lot of surface area to work off of. So this week, I took the time and threw together a very quick but strong assembly table slash workbench. Stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it. The body of the workbench is built completely from three sheets of plywood. And if you're interested in building your own, then I do have a set of plans that includes a full material list and cut list for you. I started off by using my track saw to break down the sheets of plywood into more manageable sized pieces. Of course, utilizing the cut list that I put together for the build. Then I used a table saw to rip all of the pieces down to the final dimensions. I started off by assembling the legs of the workbench, utilizing my super jaws to hold it in place while I was putting them together. And just about everything on the workbench is glued and screwed together. Since this is an indoor project, I stuck with Titebond Original Wood Glue. After getting the legs built, I then glued and screwed the side panels into place. This will not only connect the two legs together, but it'll also enclose the sides, giving me a small amount of area to use as storage. It was my goal when building this workbench to not only give myself a large usable work surface, but also a place to store items that I most frequently use while building. So the workbench will serve as a way to store these items until I have more time to deck out the walls of my shop to store these items. After getting all of the bottom shelf supporting stretchers into place, I cut down a sheet of plywood to make up the bottom shelf and set it into place. While I'm setting that into place, I want to say a big thank you to Purebond Plywood for sponsoring this project and supporting what I do. Purebond is a hardwood plywood that is sold at your local Home Depot, so it's readily available. The best part is, is that it's very high quality plywood, but at competitive prices. So if you have a project coming up where you'd like to use a little bit higher of grade of plywood, then definitely check out Purebond at your local Home Depot. It's made right here in the US and they use a formaldehyde free solution in their manufacturing. So it's even a little bit more environmental friendly. Uh -huh. At this point, the bottom shelf is just test fitted into place. And you can see when I stand on it that it has a little bit of bow and give to it. This is completely taken out whenever I glue and screw it into place. After getting that bottom shelf attached, I moved up and repeated the process for attaching the stretchers that will support the top. Oh, and here you can see as I walk across it, just how much flex gluing and screwing it down took out. When I was modeling this in SketchUp, I was really thinking that it was gonna have some rack to it because of the long span distance. However, I was shocked at just how sturdy and unmoving it felt. And the biggest contributor to the stability is the fact that I glued all the joints. The top is made from a full sheet of plywood, which will give me plenty of surface area to work on. The only thing on this workbench I didn't glue is the top, and that is so I can replace it easily in the future whenever it gets a little bit too destroyed. I went in straight from the top and used a countersink bit to make sure that the screw heads wouldn't be proud of the top and get in my way when sliding things across the top. From start to finish, this only took me six hours to build, and that is with filming slowing me down. So if you're needing a workbench, then definitely don't put it off as it's a very simple project to complete. Yeah, buddy. Now I could have very well stopped here. I have the top for working on, the bottom for storing stuff on, but I decided to take a little bit more time and build a few add-ons to make it a little bit more functional. A few projects back when I was building those Adirondack chairs, I was making a mental note of all of the things that I would have liked to have a storage solution for readily at hand. And one of the biggest things was hardware storage. So my first add-on was to cut a few French cleats so that I could utilize some of these hardware storage bins that I made years ago. These have just been tucked away in a box since I moved out of my shop in Fort Worth. And it felt great to unbox them and finally put them to use again. I'm attaching the French cleats directly to the side of the workbench. And I already know that tons of you will comment that these will fill up with sawdust being out in the open. And yes, much like everything else in the wood shop, they will get dusty. However, I've had these bins exposed on a rolling caddy in my previous shop. And for me, the amount of sawdust that gets inside them isn't bothersome enough to override the convenience of having them readily available. So I still move forward with the decision of placing them directly out in the open on my workbench. And on that note, if you'd like to make your own bins, and I do have a free set of plans on all three sizes that I've built before in the past. Moving on to drill storage. I wanted some place to store my drills that wasn't all the way across the shop. 
and I thought about storing them under the overhang. However, if a drill has a bit in it, then that won't be possible. So instead, I cut in two notches directly into the tabletop, getting the idea from my current drill holder over on my French cleat system. It was my original plan to drill a few of these in every corner of the top. However, I, I think I'll start with these two and see if one, I actually end up using it, and two, if I even like it. Something else on my workbench wish list was a place to store speed squares. It's so frustrating always looking around for where I left my speed square. So I decided to make some very simple holders on every single corner of my workbench and always have one within an arm's reach. These are simple holders made from half inch plywood that are attached together in an L formation and attached to the underside of every single corner. And for it to actually work, I'm gonna try to get into the system of using it and then immediately putting it right back. We'll see if that works. <laughs> Continuing with hardware storage, I've made a few simple screw box holders. I've made a few of these before and I can't stress how handy they are. To have all of your boxes of screws in one location is definitely worth the amount of time it takes to make one of these holders. It's a great project to utilize some of the scraps laying around. And of course you can attach it just about anywhere. Moving on to pencil and bit storage. I didn't make anything for this one because Rockler already has a great solution for this called Shot Blocks. It's a very lightweight organizer that you can hang on a wall, pegboard, or even set directly on top of your workbench. I utilize the front bins for bits and pencil sharpeners, and then the top compartment for pencil or even longer bit storage. Next up, I made a few mallet holders. Even though I only have one mallet, I made two holders and placed them on opposite legs so that no matter which side of the workbench I'm working on, I have a holder that I could throw it into. Going to the other side of the workbench, I started off by drilling some holes for some tape storage. I rooted through my scrap bin and found some half inch dowels, so I drilled some half inch holes and then stuck them directly into place. Simple enough. The large area on this side was dedicated to storing my quick clamps. I cut a small block to hold some PVC off of the workbench, just enough so that I could slip on a spring clamp and straddle that PVC. You can see I used pocket holes in order to secure these two blocks to the workbench itself. And mine does droop a little bit because of the weight of the spring clamps. But the next time I go to the store, I'm going to pick up some all thread to slip into the PVC, and this will take out that little bit of droop that the weight of the, of the clamps creates. For my quick clamps, I stuck with simple and drilled a hole all the way through the workbench so that I could insert a dowel and have something to hang these clamps off of. I made sure to keep the length of this dowel just under the length of the overhang of the workbench so that my leg wouldn't catch it as I'm walking around the workbench. In my last shop, I made a bench cookie dispenser and I could have sworn I threw it into a box. However, I couldn't find it, so I simply made another one. I grabbed some three inch PVC and cut it to the height of the amount of bench cookies that I have. I used one of the bench cookies to mark its height on the PVC pipe so that I could cut in a slot at the bottom. This will give me a grab point so I can reach my hand in and pull one out. I cut a three inch circle from some scrap wood, then used tight bond thick and quick to glue the wood to the PVC and create a shelf at the bottom. Utilizing my super jaws to clamp it while that glue was setting up, and then a countersink and a few screws to attach it to my actual workbench. Leg. And you can see it works by pulling out a bench cookie at the bottom and then throwing it back onto the top whenever I'm done with it. With that, I think the sides of the workbench are as decked out as I can get them. I am not a fan of having drawers in a shop. However, I'm also not a fan of wasted space, which is what all of the space at the bottom of the workbench is without drawers. So next I put my attention into making a railing system so I could start building and attaching drawers. I'm going with a wooden railing system over sliders because sliders are expensive. And with this being shop furniture, plywood rails is just fine with me. I first tried to attach the bottom rails with the dust setting as is. However, it was just absolutely silly to try it this way. So I emptied off the workbench and instead flipped it over on its side so that I could have easier access to the bottom. After getting it on its side, I glued and screwed in all of the rails that I made for it before moving on to making the drawers themselves. The drawers are made from half inch plywood and it took an additional two sheets in order to make all of them since there is so many. 
I kept my drawer construction very simple and easy as I don't plan to really utilize and overload these drawers. I don't like things being out of sight because then they're out of mind. But if there are a few things that even I think go good in drawers, such as shop rags or foam brushes. There might be another thing or two. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> But of course, I know a lot of people are huge fans of drawers. So base your drawer construction method off of what you're actually gonna be using the drawers for. After building the drawers themselves, I attached a wooden rail to both of its sides. Then before throwing it in, I used a little bit of paste wax on the entire wooden railing system so that everything will move nice and smoothly. The last add-on for function is to attach four quick-release casters. These are some awesome casters that Rockler puts out, made specifically for attaching to workbenches, that you need to be stationary the majority of the time, but you still want to have the ability to make them mobile quickly. Just by stepping on all four of the levers, it'll very easily lift up the workbench, making it mobile, and allowing me to move it wherever I need it. The only other thing that I did to my workbench was put a coat of oil on the top to protect it a little bit from stain or glue or anything else that I'm doing. Now keep in mind that you can take all of the storage solutions that I'm putting on this workbench and move them to your walls, make them bigger, make them smaller. So I hope you've been able to take away a few nuggets from this video to help organize your own shop. I have left you a link to all of the products that I've used down in the description and also a link to the plans if you'd like to build your own workbench. Big thank you to Rockler for supporting what I do and Pure Bond. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.